We are filming here at the Transpersonal Research Colloquium and I'm delighted to have Jessica Barkler and Les Lancaster to answer an important question for our community, which is, what is the value of a transpersonal perspective in coaching and therapy? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll respond to that first, if I may, and then Les, we might bounce back and forth as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, having worked a lot in mental health settings uh, using the arts, I find that the transpersonal introduces a vertical dimension, um, a way of uh, relating to each other, uh, not just uh, from a personal space, but also allowing, allowing an expansion of consciousness. Along a, I'm lengthening my spine as I'm saying this. It feels like an expansion of consciousness, giving us the, uh, a sense of something other, something higher perhaps, something outside of ourselves. Um, and, and that enables this, this sense of expansion, also a grounding, realizing that we are being held by a larger space. And um, it is from this larger space that we can access a, a sense of wisdom, um, a sense of lineage, a sense of connection to the wider world. And that is very enriching for a healing process or a, for a coaching process. I think any transformational process takes stepping beyond the self into the wider world, the, the relational world on the horizontal sphere, but also the, the vertical sphere. I agree with that. I think you, you, you articulated exactly what, what I would say. Um, so the question was about coaching and therapy. So it immediately places, in the, places us in the context of change, of growth, transformation. Uh, why would you coach, why would someone go for coaching if they didn't have that sense that there was something missing? And of course we said the same about therapy. So that's the starting point in relation to your question. And uh, I would really echo what, what Jessica said. I think the question is, you know, where does change arise from? What, what scale are we looking at? And you know, I think it's, a, it's well known within kind of therapeutic circles that you can point some in the someone in the direction. You could, uh, this is your problem. Here's the problem. Go and do something about it doesn't work because we, we're caught in that space that we have created um, in so many different ways in terms of the language and our relationships and so on we get caught in a space so the way to transform you have to change that space and I think I'm really saying the same as you in that way maybe we're just articulating it a little, little different and so the, the key to that change comes from the scale, the scale of that space. And of course, I would look at it, you know, as an academic in psychology, I would look at it also from the sort of history point of view, the history of, our, of my, of our discipline. You know, and it's that scale that became squeezed out under all kinds of influences, uh, you know, post-enlightenment thinking, uh, methodological restrictions, which, which kind of tried to squeeze psychology um, and squeeze out the sacred. I think that's what it comes down to. So when I talk about a larger space, that goes together with the idea of the sacred, something larger than myself. And uh, obviously in traditional ways, religious ways, I have to find a vehicle for connecting with that which is larger. So I say traditional ways, I call it prayer. Prayer, contemplation. These are traditional ways to turn that key that does bring about change. And as I say, the key point I would bring in that is scale, recognizing that you're part of something much larger. So when it comes to coaching and psychotherapy, it seems to me, from my own experience, um, experience of being in, 
involved in ritual work, and meditation work, and so on, but also the experience of working um, with research in psychology, it seems to me from all of those perspectives that recognizing a higher presence is really valuable. Now, you know, what is that presence? Obviously, people can use all the words they want. Some are going to use the word God. Others will not, will react against that term. And then you think, well, you know, how do you know? Can you prove it? Of course you can't. So it's not a question of, um, of establishing the definitions. It's a question of the impact. So that's finally coming to the point. In relation to coaching and psychotherapy, you know, it is about change. What's going to help you change? And that, again, is really what you said. I'm going to hook back onto that yeah. because what happens through a transpersonal perspective is that there is a, a change in perspective. Um, the transpersonal affords us an opportunity to expand our, our, mm. um, our vision, our awareness. And um, through that, moments of crisis or difficulty, challenge, illness, become these moments of opportunity. That's very true. And um, these doorways through, um, it's, it's like we're realizing that those points of contraction, resistance, discomfort are actually places, sources of energy. Um, and if we allow ourselves to go into them, mm. we can amplify them, let them speak for themselves, they, um, and they express themselves and something in us is changed. That's a so very interesting point. They're, they're very powerful doorways. Mm -hmm. Our wounds. Yes. The wounds, yes. Uh, exactly as you say, they become the doorways. It's mm -hmm. a very interesting mm -hmm. point. And again, in terms of research, that's also an area that is moving forward. You know, we talk, we, we you used to talk about post-traumatic stress. Yes. And uh, one of the terms that's come in recent years is post-traumatic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's part of what you're talking about there, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much both for your insightful points of view on this important subject. It's wonderful to hear from you with the depth of experience that you both bring to this area. So your insights are value. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.